Human beings have explored and mapped virtually every square inch of land on this planet. The only truly uncharted ground is deep below the ocean surface. But for the California coast, that's about to change. A vast amount of the Earth's surface is covered by water, and yet the surface of Mars has actually been mapped in greater detail. The entire surface of Mars has been mapped in greater detail than that little three-mile strip um, along the California coastline. Rick Kavitak is the director of the Seafloor Mapping Lab at California State University, Monterey Bay. Using the newest generation of high-resolution sonar equipment called multi-beam echo sounders, Kavitak and his students are working with other scientists to create high-resolution maps of the seafloor in 3D. The project that we're focused on right now is sort of like a pilot project for doing all the state waters. And we're calling it the North Central Coast Mapping Project. It's like going out, pulling the plug in the ocean, draining it, and so we can see what the ocean looks like. We can see the shipwrecks down there, we can see the rocks. That's just really cool. Historically, nautical charts were made by taking readings called soundings by lowering a weighted line off the side of a boat and measuring when it hit bottom. In the 1930s, the single beam echo sounder was developed. It calculates water depth by measuring the time it takes for a pulse of sound to travel to the seafloor and back. Now, using multi-beam sonar, which projects many beams of sound to cover a large swath of the ocean floor, scientists are getting a much more detailed view of the bottom of the sea. Instead of getting a few soundings, oh, every quarter mile or half mile or so, we get millions and millions of them and we can bring that into a computer and produce an image that looks a lot like an aerial photograph of the seafloor. Quest joined Kavitek and his students as they mapped the seafloor off the coast of Half Moon Bay. This is the multi-beam sonar head, and on the back of it, we've got the, the projector, which is the thing that emits the sound, and it makes a sound about that loud bounces off the seafloor. This is gonna be listening to it. So we're gonna be lowering this in the water, getting it uh, locked down into a vertical position, and then we'll start surveying. So let's go inside and I'll show you the screens in here that we're gonna be looking at. These two screens are our uh, survey navigation system that shows the data that we already have for the area, uh, which is this gray uh, area over here. You can see rocks and bumps in it. Uh, the red line is the line that the survey vessel is gonna be running along. Um, collecting data, and then these blue lines across here are the lines that we'll be running in order. So we'll go back and forth like mowing the lawn and just fill in this whole, uh, whole area. And uh, this is the multi- In addition to measuring the bathymetry or shape of the seafloor, Kavitek also collects data on the texture by measuring what's called acoustic backscatter. Backscatter data um, is the strength of the sound echo that comes back from the seafloor. Uh, sound that bounces off um, a hard surface like this comes back with a lot of strength. Sound that bounces off a soft surface doesn't come back with, with a whole lot of intensity, and so sand shows up very differently than rock, than gravel. But since a bed of sand dollars can echo back with the same intensity as a patch of rocks, questionable areas require further proof of what's actually down there. We have to do what we call ground truthing. And the U.S. Geologic Survey, uh, who are very expert at this, have a video tow sled. All right, we got bottom. And they're dragging that video system across the seafloor and taking very high resolution pictures of the seafloor. So now we can say, yep, oh, that really is sand. And they're taking physical samples of the bottom. So why go to so much trouble to map the seafloor in such detail? The driving force behind our project right now um, is the Marine Life Protection Act. And uh, the MLPA has a mission of defining the first network of marine protected areas in the United States. The purpose of the MPAs, the Marine Protected Areas, is to set aside areas that are likely to be really good recruitment areas for species that are in decline right now on the coast. You want to make sure you're selecting areas that have the sort of habitats necessary to support those species. But protecting fish habitat isn't the only reason to create these maps. This project will provide the tools necessary to visualize a complex environment that has until now remained largely a mystery. 
Now here's the vision of the future. This is what's really cool. We can start producing models on how ecosystems work. Models showing where water flows when it rains. Models showing where planktons bloom up, sea surface temperatures, where whales go. We're going to have climate models and rainfall models. We're going to know the current patterns out there. So we're now going to be able to literally look at how our ecosystems are functioning and play what if scenarios. We're going to be able to twiddle with the knobs. This has just transformed how we think about, at a real visceral level, how our ecosystems work.